Welcome all. Today I'll be discussing about recurrent vitreous cavity hemorrhage post diabetic vitrectomy. It's with an incidence of 11.8 percent for six months follow-up, and roughly 6.5 percent of these require re-operation. This video will be showing about the intraoperative findings in these cases and the best practice patterns to manage these patients. In this case one, we see that uh, there is a residual membrane nasally uh, that is probably reproliferated and cause vitreous hemorrhage and uh, it's also important that these during the resurgery the clean blue dye is used to stain the internal limiting membrane posteriorly to look and attempt all the removal that can remove the tiny blood vessels that are growing along with it. It's very important that we manage these membranes and remove the membranes in total during the resurgery uh, or else we'll be facing the problem of recurrent vitreous hemorrhages repeatedly. Sometimes they are very challenging and it's always good to do a uh, endolaser around these membranes because uh, post removal, once the bleeding is there, probably you may not be able to do an endolaser in these cases. Once the endolaser is done, some uh, margins are lifted, we can do the, we can remove the membrane with the cutter itself, like we do in this case. Tamponade can be decided on a case to case basis. This particular case was closed with gas. Now, coming to another case where we found the intraoperative, there are two residual membranes, both close to the major vascular arcades. Uh, probably one probably is reproliferation, the other one is uh, probably attempted delamination at the previous uh, segmentation of the previous attempt. Both cases around both membranes, endolaser was done and uh, the membrane. The elevated membrane was picked up with forceps and removed easily. The other membrane, the, which are the broadly adhered membranes, that's good to stain the ILM and attempt the peeling at peripheral to the membrane. Attempt the ILM peeling peripheral to the membrane and bring it towards the neovascular membrane. And as we can see that there is some apart from the membrane, there are vitreous chitic membranes that are present in the posterior pole were removed in total. Coming to a third case, you can see that uh, there is a membrane very close to the major vascular arcade, which is a pretty challenging location for uh, attempting any removal because you have uh, the chance of bleeding and tear formation in the posterior, in the posterior location is is, would be difficult to manage subsequently. One has to be very careful in attempting to gain a niche in these membranes. This particular membrane was being lasered before, for, for probably thought it was too dangerous to attempt its removal. After successful removal, this case again was closed with the SF6 gas. It's always good to complete the endo laser in these kind of cases. The fourth and the final case, we see that there is not so grossly visible membranes that are present in the vitreous cavity, but after staining with the green blue dye and on a closer inspection, we see there is a small membrane. And it's always good to do a, a peripheral vitreous a retinal peripheral examination to look for any new vessels in the, uh, in the, in the port area, anterior hyaloid proliferation. You can see that there is a very small membrane along the uh, major vessel in the infratemporal area. ILM peeling, which is probably not done, was attempted in this case, and which chitic membranes were removed. Now, coming to the actual new vessel that has caused recurrent vitreous hemorrhage in this case, which is pretty tricky, adhered to the major vessel posteriorly the edge, edge was formed from both the sides attempting to remove it by dragging the membrane along the major vessel rather than pulling it vertically it's any bleeding areas are 
coagulated with photocoagulation. Now it's not always good not to use any anti-vasive injections or anti-retinal cryopex in these kind of cases. Good to look for in remnant vascular membranes and partial PVD extraction. And ILM peeling at primary or resurgery is always good to do to prevent any scaffold for growth of new cells. Intraoperative fluorescein angiography is very good. It's very helpful in completing the surgical goals. That's the future of diabetic hemorrhage. Thank you for watching.